So yeah, why don't you just introduce yourself, tell us what you do over at Surly. I'm Jared, I've uh, been one of the brewers at Surly since 2008. Correct me if I'm wrong, you grew up in North Dakota. Yes. You guys like to wear red flannel. Garth was wearing red flannel as well, he's a, a NODAC guy. Yeah, I, I didn't even realize until I moved <laughs> from North Dakota that there were other kinds of shirts. <laughs> <laughs> there really isn't. You know. There isn't. <laughs> But you kind of cut your teeth as far as the brewing scene in Portland, is that correct? Uh, well, first in Eugene. Okay. Uh, I was a home brewer during college in Eugene, Oregon, and was a pizza cook at Steelhead Brewing. Okay. And, you know, I'd get most of my grain and yeast from, from Jamie Floyd, the head brewer at Steelhead. And, you know, over time, we kind of turned out that we just had very similar music tastes, and that's what got me in the brew house. You know, he invited me back, and you know, over the next few years, uh, I you know, organized a lot of uh, homebrew competitions with him, and uh, you know, did all the odds and ends, cleaning kegs, just basically the grunt work of a of a brew pub. Um, learned a lot from that guy. He's actually gone on to start Ninkasi Brewing. Oh, in okay. Oregon, so that's, I don't know, they're, <coughs> they're growing faster than Surly is. They're yeah. pretty insane. I'm, I'll expect that we'll probably see their beer here within the next few years. Yeah. But uh, yeah, from there, took a couple years off brewing, ended up uh, managing the Rogue Public House and Distillery in Portland. Um, so around kind of all the other sides of a brewing operation, like mm -hmm. uh, ran the bar events, did the Saturday market there, you know, pouring beer at that, and you know, kind of got the, the opposite yeah. side of the experience. I uh, did a little distilling there. Oh, cool. Um, you know, nothing, nothing serious, watched the still, basically. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> dump, dump buckets every once in a while, but uh, <laughs> then from there, I, I spent several years trying to work under a guy named Van Havig at uh, the Rock Bottom in Portland. Uh, they had this great uh, whole hop set, set up there. So we didn't use any hop pellets. Uh, had, the, had the hop back, it was a little eight barrel system, but you know, in addition to hand graining out, you also had to take the hops out with wow. the rake. You know, so the, our double IPA was a little ridiculous. <laughs> take care of, but uh, yeah, I worked with him for a couple years and then decided I needed to get back closer to family and in the area and saw a posting for the Surly Brewing position and didn't realize at that point that, that Todd, the head brewer, was also a rock bottom guy. So, you know, I brought, up, brought it up to my boss, to Van in Portland, and he was like, yeah, I." I'm pretty good friends with Todd, and you know, if if you feel like I'm a hard ass, wait until you work for this guy. <laughs> and you know, that's what I was looking for. It's like, yes, I, I I take this profession very seriously, and I I could never work at a brewery where people don't take sanitation and other aspects, you know, as seriously as we do. You, you're talking a little bit about you know. The differences when you go from a brew pub to a brewery, seeing the different aspects. What was it like coming from that, the Oregon scene then, and all those different aspects coming to Minnesota and working as a brewer here? Um, well, I find that that uh, in a brew pub there there's a lot more room for creativity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with uh, especially the fact that we can at Surly, we, we can't have too many brands at any given time. So you end up pumping out the same thing, which is, you know, it's great to be able to maintain a consistent product that way. But in a brew pub setting, you know, every two or three weeks, you're brewing something that you've never done or that you're only making once a year. And, you know, you get a bit more opportunity to, to develop a, your, your recipe development in a brew pub. So there's that. Mm -hmm. And there's also, you know, although we do, Surly does a lot of events, so I get to see the public that way. Um, in a brew pub, you're, you're drinking with, the, your, with your customers on a regular basis. And, 
you know, you get instant feedback, which is very rewarding and, you know, you definitely take that into account when you're developing your recipes, you know, like cha little changes to satisfy, satisfy your customers and that's, I would say that's what I miss about it, you know. Yeah, I, you know, when we talked, when we were developing the, the Pro Series kits with, with Todd, he talked about his experience at rock bottom and having that the same thing you know at, at, at the brew pub you had this ability to try different recipes and try different things out and that gave him a lot more information when he came to Surly and they started dialing those recipes in and that is is that true I mean is that true across the industry it's just you know do that you just you have that freedom in the brew pub that you just don't have in the brewery or is that just I mean, I'm just from a general I mean, point of view. I, I would say, yeah, to some degree it is. It's just, it's the matter of scale. Sure. You know, and the number of people who, who are involved in a production brewery versus a brew pub. Like, sure. on a brew pub, I was brewing, transferring, filtering, uh, packaging, you know, every, every aspect of it. Right. And here it's, you know, as we grow, when there was only six of us at Surly, I was doing most of those things, but... You know, now that we're at, at the point that we're at, I basically brew every day, and that's it. You know, yeah. we have a dedicated cellarman and dedicated packaging team. So, you know, it gets a, a little bit uh, cog-like, but at sure. least we're, you know, we've got good music playing most of the time, and we all get along, have a good time. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to be that... The breweries, where when I when I've talked to the people working in a brewery, you know, they, they're happy with the atmosphere of the brewery. It almost like it translates in the beer. Yes. The the beer is better. Well, and music is important because the uh, <laughs> the micro vibrations of loud music definitely help. <laughs> so it's not the water. <laughs> it's uh, the, the water, micro vibrations. It's generally it's only the micro vibrations. That's, <laughs> that's our secret. You know, you heard it here first. <laughs> now, the, being that you spent some time in Oregon and you spent some time in Portland, I, in the last couple of years, I hear a lot of comparisons, you know, oh man, Minneapolis could be like Portland, or why isn't our beer scene like that beer scene? And obviously now you've been involved in both. What do you see as differences and similarities there? Uh, you know, they, they got a head start. They've, mm -hmm. they, they had very accommodating beer laws from the beginning, so... You know when the the whole uh, the homebrew scene exploded in Oregon in the in the 80s, um, it was very easy for for startups to you know get a foot you know get get going because they're they're able to self distribute, mm -hmm. have a have their own pub, sell liquor, you know in addition to the beer, and also have multiple locations right you know a lot of those things we still cannot do here like right you know when we open a new brewery we won't be able to serve liquor for example uh, only only pints of our own beer and we can only do it at one location so you know I, I feel like yeah with that head start you know give us five years five years yeah. in Minnesota and I mean, how many breweries have opened up in the past six months here? Like five? It's at least five, yeah. Maybe more. More. More yeah. in the works. Yeah. And you know, you look at you look at Portland and there's you know, basically the the entire city plus the suburbs are about the size of Minneapolis proper. Yeah. And there's a hundred breweries there. You know, like, yeah, you can imagine how how many breweries this state could actually support. You know? Right, and that that comes up a lot. Uh, I remember, you know, people were talking about, oh, it's going to become too saturated. You know, there's not enough demand, and then you've got these breweries coming from out of state that are taking tap handles. And my experience traveling in the country, going to the cities like uh, the Bay Area or poor Portland, and even places out east, it just is like, oh, we're so far away from being saturated because, like you said, you take a metro area like Portland. That is a hundred breweries, and they're fine, and those breweries are doing fine. Yeah, well, I, <clears throat> I don't think there's a limited number of of craft beer drinkers. It's, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we're. I look at it all 
all of the craft brewers are in it together. You know, we're basically, we're just, if a new brewery opens, I look at it, they're taking more away from Anheuser-Busch. Yeah. You know, it, the more of us that there are, the more it legitimizes the idea of craft beer to, uh, to an average person. And they're like, wow, there's all of these local breweries. Uh, people must be drinking it. It's, it, it's no longer a, a strange thing. Right. You know, like, well, this isn't a Miller Light. <laughs> well, no, it's not. And that's not that's, a bad thing. Yeah, so. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Now, I mean, obviously, probably everyone in this room is pretty aware of Surly's expansion plans and, you know, don't want to put you on the spot, but, uh, you know, where is that at right now as far as um, location possibly or, or, or timeline? No comment. <laughs> um, well, we're, we're hoping to have a, a site selected by this spring okay. at the latest. Um, and... We've narrowed it down to some locations, but um, you know, just this being as large of an endeavor as it is, we really can't give any any hints as to Absolutely. where it is or the size. You know, it's um, yeah. We still haven't acquired the land, so you know, it's basically we're just staying silent for now. But yeah. once that we do find the site. You know, we'll we'll post that instantly. Everyone will know where it'll be, and it's going to take about two years from yeah. when the site is selected until we open it. So yeah. it's it's still a ways down the road, but then we've got to get got to get something going soon because uh, that warehouse is full. <laughs> you can't tell us that kind of thing, but what has it done just for the the morale? The well, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah, we're just, we're doing our jobs, but then, you know, occasionally on a Friday, we'll all start talking and, you know, break into song. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's definitely uh, exciting, you know, when you start thinking about it, but yeah, we've, we've still got a job to do and yeah still expanding where we're at still making changes to to our process you know adding new equipment we we uh, just purchased a centrifuge Ooh, um, very nice yeah that's a i think that's the first piece of equipment that todd doesn't quite understand the inner workings of which is saying a lot because he's yeah. a Pretty, pretty much a mechanical genius, but that's a, uh, I don't know, we're, we're no longer, we're no longer finding our beer. You know? Yeah, yeah. So Surly is officially a uh, vegan. Very cool. Which is kind of uh, glad to be able to say that I have a few friends who have been unable to drink our beer and, you know, although there was, there was never, no, we don't need to talk. <laughs> Let's get into the brass tacks here. What kind of findings do you use? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, none now, but yeah, just uh, spinning the beer and we're able to get, I, I find that the, the hop character is a little brighter already. Uh, if, if anyone hasn't had Cynic in a while, I recommend getting a pint. It's significantly nicer. I, hmm. It's, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, the, it's always had a fairly strong yeast character to it. Sure. And some of the, like, that's a little bit rounded out now. Yeah. So, so it's, you know, interesting to see those small changes. And, Absolutely. Yeah. That, that brings a question to my mind. What, I'm always curious to hear from the brewer, what's your favorite surly beer? You know, somebody's brewing the beer and is around it all the time, sees it from the beginning to the end. I, I would say that, that it changes every single month. Really? Yeah. I mean, when you have an unlimited supply of beer, <laughs> you... You get to try it, it often? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're, you get stuck on Furious for a while and like, oh, I can't drink any more of that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I really like the mild. I, I hope that we're having a, a larger release of it this year. Sure. Um, 
no, I, I'm always disappointed that that brand hasn't taken off. I think that uh, it's maybe the name of it is hard for people to swallow. They're like surly, mild, <laughs> mild, surly, wet. <laughs> Uh, casually annoyed. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't quite fly for people, but it's oh, it's just a great session beer. Absolutely. And, you know, with that, also the bitter brewer. I, yeah, I like beers that I can, you know, sit sit on the pontoon and drink all day. Yeah, you know? yeah, and that seems to be a trend that's kind of um, taking hold, and I'm happy to see in the craft beer the, from from the drinker's perspective that. You know, they might be introduced by a big bombastic beer that might grab their attention because it's such a large departure from the macro. Uh, but as they get more familiar with craft beer, they start to gravitate more towards those session beers. And it's cool to see. I mean, Surly's made some awesome session beers. And like the Hellas, uh, the Hell has been, I thought was one of my favorites. Um, but obviously, Freerus was the first one I ever had from yeah. Surly. Well, I've got most of my questions. I'll kick it yeah. to you guys. Why not? With the uh, the new brewery, do you guys have you guys talked about how big you would expand your portfolio? And uh, along with that, does that kind of give you a lot more opportunity to do that experimenting? We all have our theories and our, our hopes and dreams. Yeah. And <laughs> I think most of us are are hoping that the original brewery will basically become our lab, you know, our little mm. little laboratory place to you know infect beers with random nasties and mm -hmm. you know play around with other styles uh, you know and hopefully we'll also have a, a small like a uh, brew pub size uh, system at the new brewery I mean none of these things are set in stone but they're they're definitely ideas that we keep putting in Omar's ear and hope that he's hearing them <laughs> you know, because we, we all would like to experiment more and, you know, hopefully we'll be playing around uh, with some smaller batches at our current location as well. But, yeah, I think so. And the Barabin portfolio, do you plan on, like, having more beers on the shelves year-round? Like yeah. The yeah, the yeah. I, I, I mean, I assume when we're going statewide, I... I keep recommending that that hell become a year-round beer. I think that yeah, it's excellent. I think that it reaches out to a whole different, uh, you know, people who aren't hop heads are going to love hell. It's like that's it doesn't take away from the furious. It's just a completely different group of drinkers. Other questions? Talk a little bit about. Um Oh, the anniversary beers are Todd. Todd, Todd, and only Todd. <laughs> I, I don't know what six is yet. You know, I keep bringing up when are we going to brew six? Because, you know, usually in the past we've released them in January with the exception of five because it wasn't ready. And it's like, yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> we'll brew it when it's time. Lock okay. in a room and <laughs> Basically, I mean, I, I walked in there one Sunday and found him in the back room homebrewing. I've never seen the guy homebrew. Like, well, what are, what are you doing? Working on something. <laughs> right, so, you know, so occasionally he, he, can be a, he can be a little secretive, but it's kind of fun, you know. It's, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that with five, we we're finally able to play around with Brett. I feel like that's sort of a, a badge of honor, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, like as a brewer, I feel like using Brett and an owner allowing you to use Brett with the with the possibility of brewery wide infection, you know, if if we weren't doing things right, there could be sour furious out there, and there's not, and I feel like that's a, a testament to you know, to our process. Absolutely, and, yeah. I, I think we're, you know, gonna keep playing around with with the bread, Britonomyces. And how many yeast strains do you guys use? How many yeast strains do we use? We use three, or you could say four, if you wanna consider bread sure. a yeast, but it's more, it's 
not necessarily yeast, so yeah. bacteria. So that's right. three? Yeah. Three. Cool. Yeah. We have an ale strain, we, you know, lager, and sure. then our Belgian strain that's only used for the Cynic at this point. And do you propagate those in house? Yes. Cool. Do you have any parting words for us? I have stuff for people if they want stuff. Oh, yeah. sweet. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so yeah. much, sir. Thanks for coming on down. Thanks for coming on, everyone. Stuff. Stuff, yes.